Welcome back to the PMC Project, a positive masculinity crusade today. Uh, today, show number 11 on this, on this series, okay, raise your standards. Um, how can you upgrade yourself? What we want to talk about on this particular show, raise your standards. This one's part two on this, talking about deserve level. I'm going to come to you, Ragnar, early and often on this. Deserve level. This one's a tough one for a, a lot of people. Before I throw it over to you, Ragnar, I just want to, for the listeners out there, we're going to talk about how to get your self-image straight here. So we're going to have some Monday morning things to take away. Before we get into that, I'm going to kick it over to Ragnar here in a second. Um, again, the Crusader starting up on the PMC project. Go ahead and look below uh, for all the listeners on this. It helps us out uh, immensely on our YouTube algorithms, if you will. Hit that subscribe button. That'll really help us out. Uh, Ragnar, get us kicked off on this. Why, why are we talking about deserve level? What kind of things, road bumps, are we seeing on this? Go ahead and take it away. We'll get right into it. Well, everything down as far as from the clothes you wear, food you eat, the car you drive, the home you live in, your girlfriend, spouse, uh, the friends you have, the dynamics with your family, the job you have, the education level you have, the bank account you have, everything can trace back to unconsciously what you feel you deserve. Because if you truly in your subconscious mind felt you deserve better, if you really felt that in your cells, that you are higher value, then almost magically, it's not magic because you'd be behaving differently and, and thinking differently, but your, these bank accounts would increase. The quality of food you eat, the clothing, the, the romantic partner, the automobile you drive, the vacations you take, um, the conversation you have, the people you have those conversations with, everything would start to rise in a positive direction once that deserved level, a.k.a. self-image, increased as well. And so the quickest way to start doing that, we, the, the series is the Raise Standards series, is you raise standards of what you will tolerate from yourself. I, I'm no longer, I'm going to allow myself to have a certain amount of sweets or whatever per week, but then I'm a hard bound down that I'm not going to, I'm going to raise the standard. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to have a better body. You know, or, or I'm, you know, I, I got, I'm acting with a manic partner here and, and I've been disrespected for a long time and I have a conversation and say this, listen, I'm under my standards here and this needs to be different and you give a certain amount of time for that behavior to change and it doesn't change, then something's got to go. Um, the job, you're like, you're stuck in a cubicle, you're miserable, you, you got these great ideas about a home business or, or great ideas for the company, whatever. And for whatever reason, you don't feel like you're bright enough or you deserve to be able to have a boot in this company, you know? So if you can raise that software inside you, all these other things kind of automatically start happening. And you, just, you all look around six months, two years, and you have a different life, you know? You just have a different life. People are respecting you differently and talking to you differently. Your level of satisfaction and happiness have increased. Always you raise those standards, raise your just level, raise your self-image. Sometimes those can be interchangeably, not always. But they're all tied together, the three legs, same stool. And it's hard to, 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 to go any higher without those three legs being in play. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, Ragnar, I think one of the things that you talked about, okay, because we can apply that, all right? Um, can you guys oh, hear me okay? Just give me a thumbs up on that if you can hear me okay. Here's, here's where we're at on this, okay? Again, I think it's, it's you know, I, I keep asking about audio because sometimes it's a little bit tough for me. I, I speak a little bit. A little bit quicker pace, so that makes it tough sometimes. Three legs of the stool you talk about. I think what you're talking about is it, it, it's all encompassing on that, Ragnar. Okay. Talk about career body image. This comes up on that, Abednego. Um, we talk about the people you, you, you associate with. Okay. Uh, in the other show, we just talked about you become the average of the top, you, you become the average of the top five people that you hang around. Okay. You become the average of the top five people that you hang around. I think deserve level, it's a tough one and it comes into play in all this stuff because you can see right away when you look at different folks, family members, friends, coworkers, whatever, you have a really good idea about how they view themselves and what they deserve by who they hang around, okay? And you also get a really good idea about what a person's deserve level is 
if they make very minimal amounts of money. This is all, you know, this is all part of what people think they deserve. Okay. And education level, certainly there, the people you hang around. Okay. Who are your friends? What are they looking like? What do their careers look like? Is their family in order? Are they in chaos all the time? Okay. I mean, I, you guys all have friends like this too. I have people that I know their whole, I have never known them except that they were in chaos. Okay. And because they didn't number one somewhere, and we're going to do this show next about boundaries, but obviously they have poor boundaries. Okay. But they have people in their lives who bring chaos to everything. And what it means when you have chaotic people, chaotic job, chaotic boss, chaotic spouse, whatever, that's all you deserve. If you thought you deserve better than a bunch of crazy wacko people, you'd go get better than crazy wacko people. Okay. Um, again, not trying to be politically correct on any of that. If you have chaos in your life, it's because you think you deserve that level. Okay. And all of this stuff, right? Deserve level. It's like water. It finds its level. It finds its level. Okay. And you go down to that level, whatever you think you deserve. Okay. If your friends treat you terribly all the time and you don't have any pushback on this deal, if they're always coming to you to borrow money and all, then you just feel like you don't deserve anything for yourself. So deserve level, Abednego goes to the core of all these problems, okay? If you don't mind that you're 200 pounds overweight, that's what you think you deserve, okay? If you don't deserve any quality relationships, one of our concepts is protein versus can cotton candy, okay? If all you deserve is hang around wearing sweatpants, okay, looking at whatever people magazine readers digest whatever your level is okay that's keeping you away from growing to be a better version of yourself and to put yourself and your family in the market for a better life okay and you're bringing all this chaotic stuff into it that's all you think you deserve that's your self-image level okay and you will go to whatever level you think and your bank account will also reflect that deal Okay. I know you see a lot of this too, Abednego, in your work with people in the ministry. Self image and deserve level. They're first cousins on this. Okay. We can get people, we've, we've seen this, guys. All of you know different people we've worked with in our outreach here to work with men. We can get them to a certain level pretty quickly. Okay. But to have life changing stuff, it's hard to happen quickly because. You got to reprogram this stuff. They don't believe they deserve a better family. They don't believe they deserve people in them, in their lives to treat them better. Abednego, what kind of things do you see? It's creating a lot of roadblocks and hurdles out there. What are you seeing for a deserved level and what it causes trouble with on that? Yeah, I've seen this actually happen in a lot of relationships where, um, you know, things are going great. Um, these two people are crazy about each other, but it gets to a point where it gets really serious, whether they begin to talk about marriage or maybe they're already married, um, and begin to talk about kids or something like that. And somebody will sabotage the relationship and they sabotage it because they don't feel like they deserve what they have. They don't deserve somebody this kind. They don't deserve somebody this good looking, whatever it is, they don't deserve it. And so, you know, they got into it. They got into the relationship. They, they really liked this person. They liked hanging out with them. They were attracted. But um, they hit the detonate switch because they, they don't deserve that. Now, they can't articulate that. Um, they don't know why they did it. And they'll sit there and on the couch and they'll say, well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. But the reason is that they didn't feel like they deserved that kind of relationship. Maybe their mom and dad had a terrible relationship. So they're supposed to have a terrible relationship and they're, and it, whatever it is, it's, it's that what they feel like they're worth, what they, what they're, it, to me, it comes from this sense of identity. You know, we've talked about this before where somebody wins the lottery 
and they win millions upon millions of dollars. And within no time at all, they're dirt broke again. They're right back where they were. They might have a nicer TV, but they're right back where they were. Why is that? Because they didn't deserve that. They don't feel like they deserved it. And so they find a, what is that? Water always finds its level, right? And we've talked about that before too. And, and it will. It, it will go right down to your deserved level, right down to um, who you say you are or who you think you are. Um, right down to that identity. You know, there's been studies done on that where um, you have somebody who might be a very low intelligence, but they came from a rich family and this person will find a way to be rich. And you find this other person come from a poor family and they're highly intelligent, but they'll always be poor because that's just their identity. That's how they identify themselves. That's, that's where they feel like their deserved level is. It's not all the time that way. <laughs> But you can see it happen a lot. You know, I'm glad you brought that up about the. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up about the lottery winners. What happens on this is the same thing that happens to anything. We get rid of all the things in our life that we think we don't deserve. So if somebody shows up, and it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter if it's your scratch off lottery geek down here at the local mini mart. It doesn't matter if Publishers Clearinghouse showed up with the big van and did a commercial. It doesn't matter. If you showed up one day and you're used to a certain level of income, you know, poverty level, maybe middle class, whatever. And now they're going to give you a billion dollars. What you will do because of deserve level. Okay. You will spend that thing right down to your deserve level. Okay. And now you're right. You're right. Abednego. You might have a bigger TV. You might have a different car for a little while, but you will have spent that down that equity. You will spend it right down to your deserve level. Okay. Now you're exactly right on the relationship side. If somehow you think you hit the lottery in a relationship, you'll find a way to sabotage, to detonate this thing because you will get rid of those good relationships until you get down to where you think you belong on this thing. So Ragnar, the question is, right? Why does it take so long to get your self image caught up with new i that's what we're that's what our really or the essence of our problem is here with all these guys yeah we can get them backed off the cliff we can get them put down the gun put your rope away really literally that's where we've been but why does it take so long ragnar to catch up their self-image level that's the hardest thing to move up to all this okay and why is that so hard for the people why is that our biggest struggle well, I think it goes back to the top five again. It goes back to environment. Um, you know, you become the average of the five you hang out with. And, and also the environment you allow yourself to be in and the influencers influencing, influencing environments that you allow to come inside. And so I think that's a big, I mean, I've, so Andy, you have two, or yeah, you said you've been, I've been in several mastermind groups around the country where, you know, I, 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 at one point I had a, a consulting business and stuff like that, that was kind of na national. And I never thought about that when I was coming up as a kid, you know, I thought yeah. I would, you know, have clients all over the country, you know, I yeah. never thought that would be possible. And so these mastermind groups kind of helped me build that self image because they, some of these guys, these groups were already doing that. And so hanging out with them and, and them pushing me, for deadlines and stuff like that, you, you know, I was nervous about it, scared about it, but I pushed through that and, and take those steps and realize I'm still alive after I take those steps. And then we started having some success and things and money started coming in on things. And so it was like, wow, all of a sudden now I'm, I'm this person, but Lord knows, you know, I was a kid growing up. If you'd have told some dad to have clients all the country, I'd have been like, you're crazy. I mean, I'm not, I don't know how to do that. You know? Yeah. And the self-image had to be built. And I had to, I actually had the knowledge and, and, and the wherewithal to do that stuff. And it still took probably another 18 months to do it just because of fear, just because of who am I to do this? You know, am I to, yeah. who am I to, to do this? So it's working in my practice. Who am I to have working in other doc's practices? You know, so that was all self-image stuff. And I had to read the right books, be around the right people, attend mastermind groups. And then eventually you, it gets to the point you kind of hold your nose and jump. And then you realize once you once you start you start flying, you know it's like wow, all these wings were here. 
but you've been building those on. It's kind of like the old Karate Kid uh, movie years ago. You know, yeah, you're painting the fence, waxing the car, all this stuff. Because the kid's self-image was that he's being bullied all the time. He doesn't have, he doesn't have the confidence and the skills to do himself. And and so if no matter what Miyagi would tell him, he he wouldn't believe it, or his mom would tell him he wouldn't believe it. You know, so he finally said he finally went through the back door and had him do all these chores. And then he opened one, and all of a sudden the kid had the skills there to fight. He was a block, kick, punch, and all of a sudden he realized he had those skills. And then his self-image, what did he do? He also gave him one of his old cars that he had shined up and rebuilt to let him drive to prom. You know, he, he, he was karate kids about, if you watch him, he's holding his self-image. Miyagi built his self-image throughout that whole movie. And at the end of the movie, he wins the tournament, you know? And he, even in the tournament, he didn't think he could win the tournament. He just, you know, I'm just trying to score points. Yeah, and they finally won the tournament. So that movie's about building self-image. I think a lot of people saw themselves in that, and that's why that movie resonated. Make sense? Yeah, I remember watching that the first time, and you know, it's kind of like it's like any underdog story. Okay, um, we saw it with King David. Um, initially, he's supposed to marry the daughter of King Saul, the princess, and he talked himself out of this relationship with Merab, and he said exactly those words that you guys are both articulated so well right now i mean he says oh who am i to marry the daughter of a king i you know i'm a shepherd boy man i just can't so he talks himself out of that deal the second one here comes now around the king's daughter michael oh he's supposed to marry her and he gets that same line again because that's his program that's his loop in his head okay now oh who am i i don't know i'm just some poor dude and, and of that i'm the youngest runt of the family there too so i'm even worse than those people Okay. Now, what we have, Abednego, you came through this in your life. Uh, you know, you are some basketball player of renown uh, in your past. And I don't want to give everything in the whole world away, but it takes people a while to learn how to win. Okay. It doesn't matter how many blue chippers show up on a team. Um, when, you always hear this, and it doesn't matter if you're the first, if this is, maybe this is your, they always say this. Oh, this is his first Super Bowl, though. I don't know. You know, they're going to have to learn how to win in this big on this big stage. And they say all this stuff. We were talking about some stuff earlier uh, before we went on the air here about a couple people that we saw playing for a college football team the other day. OK. Every time you go to a new level, you've got to learn to manage all this stuff. OK, now you're on campus. Back in high school, you were some big time dude. Not in college. You're just some guy. Everybody else on the team is some big guy back in college, in high school, okay? So when you get to college, you got to learn how to be big time. When you go to the pros, you got to somehow learn to step. I mean, so everything is about increasing not only awareness, but what you think you deserve. I don't think I deserve to be here yet. And you'll flounder around in the, in the minor leagues for a while until you can maybe start to get to where you know how to hit off major league pitchers. Okay, because just because you get the call up to the bigs, that doesn't mean you in your head think you belong there. It's a very rare dude who can go playing high school ball one day and think you're supposed to belong in the NBA and bypass college. Okay, it's about deserve level. It's the same issue of Bendigo. I know we got short time here. Uh, We're running up against time on this on 20 minutes already. Quick hits. How did we get through Monday morning issues on self-deserve. We see it all the time. Now, listen, if, there, if this wasn't an issue, every, every single cover of National Enquirer, Cosmo, whoever, wouldn't be talking about everybody's weight problem. So weight problem's a big issue. Money's a big issue. National pride is a big These are all issues that we deal with. Abednego, Monday morning stuff, what do you got as we get ready to close out on this? Self, self-image, deserve level issues. A couple things are coming to mind. Um, for me, for one, um, this co- the comparison thing, and that's a whole other issue. Uh, but when we begin to compare our lives to other people's lives, that can that can come into this issue as well. Um, for me, you know, there's just a lot of uh, of of experiences that we've had, a lot of baggage that we carry um, that filter in and help us develop our, our level of deserve, whatever, whatever that is. We have faulty examples. We, we are all imperfect people. And so we have a faulty prototype of, 
of maybe what we're looking for. And um, that can all play into our decision or our deserved level issues as well. Uh, for me, it just helps remind me that when God created man, he created us in his image. That's the image that we're created in. And even though sin entered in and messed everything up, still we're created in the image of God. You know, and it reminds me of when uh, Jesus was questioned about whether or not his, his guys were, whether or not he was going to pay taxes. And he goes, give me a coin. And, and then he goes, well, who's, whose inscription is and in, whose image is on this coin? And they're like, well, Caesar's. He goes, well, give to Caesar what's Caesar's and give to God what's God's. We are made in the image of God. And so we're to give to God um, the best of what we have. And he's given us the best of what he has. He gave us Jesus. And so if we allow our image of ourself to be defined by what God says we are and who God says we are, uh, it's, it's, to me, it's a game changer. Because otherwise, then media is going to define my image of myself. My, my top five is going to define the image of myself. My failures are going to define my image um, whatever, my wife, my job, all these things are going to define who I am. If I can lock on to God and who God says I am, then that, that stays the same because he's the same as he was yesterday, today, and forever. And so to me, that's be who God says you are. That's a really hard thing when you throw, and I don't want to go here today. We've done a whole series on shame, by the way. If you are listening today and you stumbled onto this show, um, we go over to the last few shows we did on shame. We had a shame series on that. Um, those are some of the best, uh, most viewed series that we've had in all of this time. Okay. And it's hard to do that. I know what you're talking about, um, Archie, when, or uh, Bendigo, when everybody throws that in there about deserve level, when people start throwing shame in there. Okay. Ragnar, close us out real quick on a quick hit. What can people do Monday morning to help work on their deserve level and increase that? Well, I think, you know, nowadays with technology, it's so wonderful. Uh, you know, you can, YouTube is, a, we're on YouTube right now. I mean, videos like we have here, other videos, you know, there's a great book came out in 1960 called Psycho Cybernetics. It was written by a plastic surgeon named Maxwell Maltz. And what he discovered is that some of the people he reconstructed and got them back to, you know, beautiful face, whatever, a mental picture of themselves is still the person with the facial scar or whatever. And so they're soft didn't upgrade. And also he saw some people um, where they change. And, and I'm a, you know, I, I have a like, background myself. And so I, there's certain works I've done where you can see behavior and a personality change very dramatically in just a week or two uh, when they have a cosmetic enhancement like as far as uh, a face, smile, whatever. Um, you can see their personality change. They've been the same person. It's just now their self image is up and they, and now they're projecting, uh, this light was always inside them, but it has been hindered, uh, because of some defect they felt they had either, uh, subjectively or objectively. And, um, but sometimes you have people that, that will change like that, but their internal picture of themselves does, does change, uh, and they have to work on. It. So it's a, it's a good place to start. You has, uh, different, uh, summaries of that book on there and you get the book yourself. That's a really good one. Um, but just start trying to change internal picture, internal deserve level, raise your standards for yourself and for how you're treated and what you deserve, start raising your standards, and then put in the work. Um, start putting in the time, the effort, doing the exercises. And uh, like the book Psycho Cybernetics, it talks to you about relaxing, kind of letting your conscious mind kind of relax and start changing the pictures, playing mental movies, mental rehearsals in your head, theater of your mind is what they call it. And start playing those videos in your head, and that will slowly start saturating your subconscious mind with those images, and it'll eventually get to a certain concentration will flip, and that'll be your new picture. Usually it takes about a month of consistent effort of that, maybe 20 minutes a day, and you'll start feeling those behaviors change, and all of a sudden you're just responding differently. People responding to you differently. Um, you have different boundaries. You have different standards. You're, you're, you're pushing yourself a little hard. You're raising your hand a little more. Normally you'd be shy. Now you're catching up raising your hand and kind of participating more, things like that. Maybe you're asking outside a little different caliber than you would have six months earlier. You'll just kind of notice things kind of keeping up around you and 
And uh, one day you'll just kind of wake up and all of a sudden realize you have a life going around you that you had a year earlier. You know, it's funny, Ragnar, you bring that up. I think everybody knows when you say self-sabotage, when you say you're hanging around people that are bringing you down, everybody somehow grabs onto that and says, yeah, that can happen. That's something that can happen. But when you're talking about reprogramming your mind with affirmations and different environment and different people hanging around, somehow people always want to throw water all over that, cold water on, and doubt all that stuff. But they instantly know, if I'm hanging around a bunch of uh, criminals, that can really harm me. But somehow they want to marginalize discredit, right, or laugh at this idea that it can work. It works in the other way, garbage in, garbage out. It's the same, good in, good out, too, okay? Gigo... Garbage in, garbage. We we understand that, but good in, good out. It works the same way. It's about what you program in. So people want to grab onto that thing, and but they don't want to. They don't want to recognize the the opposite, the obverse of that thing. Okay. As we get going, guys, thank you for being here. Uh, talking about deserve level, it's a huge problem to me. It's the biggest problem we have uh, in our country. Okay. You don't deserve a savior. You don't deserve a bank account. You don't deserve a country. You don't deserve a safe place to be. You don't deserve a spouse, a person to date who's good. All these problems come up. Okay. I don't deserve to pass a test. Who am I? All this stuff. Okay. For the PMC project, positive masculinity crusade. Again, you can really help us out. If you look down at that red button on YouTube and hit subscribe guys signing out here, we'll come back for another time. Talk about some boundaries as we go through this series about raising your standards. Thanks for being here guys. And we'll come back in and do it again. Thank you.